Well, let's all settle down no, in our seats. And truly, it is a beautiful day to worship and praise our living God. Amen? Amen. So as we have our service this morning, let's uh, remember the protocols that we have to abide to, you know, social distancing and everything. So um, praise the Lord for this uh, beautiful day once again. And if you have your Bibles with you, no, I encourage you all to open our Bibles in 1 John, and we will read in chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. It says here, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atonement sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought, ought to love one another. Praise be the word of the living God. So, in the book of C.S. Lewis, no, there's this book na kung gibasa saya, in the four love, he quoted, allow me to quote what he said. He said, Love anything and your heart will be wrong and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give it to no one, not even an animal. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in a casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. To love is to be vulnerable. So the book of C.S. Lewis addresses the different types of love in Greek. No, in, in the English word, there's only one word for love, and that is love. But in, in Greek, there are four no, types of love in Greek. That is eros, storge, philia, and agape. So, eros, uh, the difference between these kinds of types of love is that their nature of words, no, it's their nature. Eros is our sexual love. Storge is the family affection, no, our love for our families. Philia is friendship. But what is the greatest among this love is the agape. And this kind of love, it is a love that is given. It is a love that is a best kind because it is, this is God's love for us. No, it is good in all circumstances. So in the verses that we have read in verse 7, the love that is used over here in Greek is actually translated as agape. That this is the love of God. So Jesus sets a new standard of love, my son. No, he sets a new standard sa gugma. As he stated in John in the Bible, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Therefore, church, Jesus is the standard of love. So why do we love? In the verses that we have read, we love because love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God, and we love because we know God. Love is from God. You know, the way heat is from fire, the way light is from the sun, love belongs to God's nature. That is who He is. It is woven into who He is. It is part of what it means to be God. You know, just as the sun gives light because it is light, just as the fire gives fire because it is fire, no, God is love because He is love. So how does the fact that God loves us result in us loving others? No, 
Why does it enable us na mawigog mata sa uban? The answer, church, is the new birth that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 said, Therefore, if any man in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are becoming new. This is clearly seen in 1 John 4, 7 to 12, no? in the verses that we have read a while ago. John shows the link in two ways. No? First, he shows that God's nature is love, so that when we are born again by him, we share that nature of him. We share that nature of love. And the second is, he shows that the manifestation of that nature in history no, in history is displayed by him sending his son so that we might have eternal life, my so on. That is only through his son, Jesus Christ. God's love manifests no, through his son, Jesus Christ. And the aim of, that, of him sending his son is for the atonement of our sins. So in other um, translation, no, it means the propitiation. No, it means that he came to bear our punishment for sin and thus be the one who removes the wrath of God from us. Truly, church, let us remind ourselves that the greatest manifestation of love is from God, no, sending his one and only son to, to bear our sins, to bear the wrath that we deserve in verse 10 in this love not that we have loved God but that he loved us and sent his son he is emphasizing that the nature and the origin of love does not belong to us now that's not rely on our response to God but love is and love starts with God and so let's go back to what C.S. Lewis said, that to love is to be vulnerable. To love is giving your one and only son for the salvation of the world. Love is Jesus was ready to be wrong, ready to be broken. Love is displayed upon that cross. He was crucified. Love is when he stood silent as he was mocked and he was accused of doing wrong. Love is when he bore the pain, carrying the cross to Calvary. His love that was crucified to redeem sinners like you and me. It is the love that forgives church. So if God so loved us are we not are we ought to love one another just as Christ did and so this morning church let us remind ourselves of the love of God manifested through Jesus Christ so let's all rise up from our seats and let's all prepare ourselves to praise and worship God Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, Father, for your love that is displayed in your Son, Jesus Christ. It is a love that is ready to be wrong and to be broken for the salvation of the world. And Lord, cause us, your church, to love as Christ did, Lord. It is a love that forgives it's a love that gives hope. It's a love that gives mercy. 
for we ourselves are recipient of your goodness, Father. And so this morning, we'll just come to praise you and worship you with a humble heart, Father, knowing that apart from you, we are nothing, Lord. We're here, not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. We are here, not because of our good works, so that we can boast, but it's because of your grace alone, Father God. And so we will worship you. We will praise your holy name.
according to our iniquities, Lord. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your love for us, Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our sins from us, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that while we were still sinners, O oh God, yet sinners, that you died for us, O oh Lord. And we stand here because of your grace, because of your mercy alone. And so we will continue to just praise you and to worship your holy name.
strength of flesh and bones But in the costly wounds of love At the cross My worth is not in scale or name In win or lose, in pride or shame but in the blood of Christ the Lord at the cross I rejoice in my Redeemer Greatest treasure Well spring of my soul And I rejoice in Him no other My soul is Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah, no? Praise God. Nga nagkita na santa. Check. Praise God. No? Salamat sa ginoo for almost seven months, no? Hinahinay na tang nag-abot o balik. So, Ismaili ng imong katapan, ing na pagkamaayos Ginoo. Praise God, no? Pagkamaayos sa Ginoo. Indeed, God is good. And a few announcement. Uh, today is second Sunday of the month and we supposed to have a dedication Sunday. But the thing is that wa pa man ang mga bata na alay na saag praise god <laughs> so uh, ang atong himuon kadtong mga birthday celebrant in the month of october i want you to come forward and we will pray for you those who are in the month of october uh, please come forward magampo ta ninyong tanan na ay month of October. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. O sarap ang month of praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Salamat sa ginoo. Ah, yeah, month of October. Praise God. Oh. So, kinsa pa? Napahiglain? I suppose, kinira sila, no? Don't worry. Di man may mangita ginasal. We will just pray. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, may I request everybody to stand up and we will pray sa atong mga kaigzonan. Silang yan po mga igzon. Hallelujah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that indeed, Lord, you are good. And Lord, we thank you. Bisa pa man yung adlawa ka ron, laing Domingo na usab, nga imong gigstinar sa matag-usak ka namo, Diyos. We thank you for your grace and mercy. And Father, we thank you, bisa pa man sa among mga kaigsunan nga nag-celebrate o ilang birthday sa month of October. And Lord, we acknowledge, O God, that you're the source of life. And we even pray, O God, that more birthdays to come into their life and that you will be glorified, O God. Sa ilang dagan, sa lumba, sa kinabuhi, nga mapasidunggan ka o mahimaya ka. We thank you as a church, O God. We thank you and use their life for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth, even in this place at Talisay. Just give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Salamat sa ginoo. Happy Lord's Day. And ang atong prayer continues every Friday. And praise God for our last uh, last Friday. No? Uh, Nakauba na to. It is what we call dual fellowship. It is face-to-face -face and virtual. So praise God. Nakauba na to. Mga kaisunan na to. Bisaglagyo sila. Na si... Na ang taga Canada na kauban nato during the time, and the rest ng mga isunan within our our place na kauban po nato. So next time I invite you to attend Friday seven o'clock sa gabi. And now we will continue our study in First John. We will be studying this morning First John chapter three and. From verse 1 to verse 10. I want you to open your Bible and we will stand up as we read this passage of scriptures. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 10. And this is what the Bible declares. Behold what mother of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not been yet revealed what we shall be. But we know 
that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor know him. Verse 7, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. And he, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God who was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In verse 10, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. And it says, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor he who does not love his brother. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. That indeed, O oh God, you are the source of everything. You are the source of love. And Father, as we continue to ponder your word in 1 John chapter 3, Holy Spirit, teach us. Help us to understand, and not just to understand, that we may walk according to your will. And Father, whatever accomplishment this morning, we are very careful in giving you back all the glories and praises and thanks. And Father, in Jesus' name we pray, our Lord and Savior, and everybody will say, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So sit down. And praise God sa atong mga kaigsunan. Praise the Lord sa those who are watching Australia. Praise God. Happy Lord's Day to you. And we have some who watch in UK, in Papua New Guinea. Praise God. And sa Tibuok, Pilipinas. Salamat sa Ginoo. Praise the Lord for technology. We were able to maximize nga ang technology maggamit for the expansion of His kingdom. Now, I entitled this sermon, A Reason for Holy Living. A Reason for Holy Living. There are three things we have to tackle this morning. First, in verse 1 to verse 3. The reasons for holy living is because God, the Father, loves us. Matong gikanta kanina, no? Nga gihigugma ta sa amahan. That is the first reason. And the second reason for holy living is that in verse 4 to verse 8, that God the Son died for us. Ipakamatyan ta sa anak sa Diyos, which is Jesus Christ. And the third thing, the reason for holy living is that God, the Holy Spirit, lives in us. That is verse 9 to verse 10. Now let's go to the first part of verse 1. And this is what the Bible declares. Behold, what manner of love the God has bestowed on us that, listen to this phrase, we should be called children of God. Now, John speaks in amazement about this manner of love that makes us children of God. Now, try to close your eyes and imagine on what glorious love that God should adopt me, you and I, to be His son and daughters. That God should claim me as His son. And that God should call me His Son. 
Mga Igsoon, do not expect that the world will understand that kind of relationship because they don't even know who God is. Well, they can talk about God, they can talk about Jesus Christ, they can, they can talk about the Bible, but the fact of the matter is that they don't understand who really God is. And only person who knows God through Christ can fully appreciate what it means to be a child of God. Amen? Igmad to kas by bayon karon Domingo, mupunit ka ko sa kahubog, pangutan ni mo kaila sa Gino? Of course, yes. And here's a question. Unsa man mga igsoon kanang second praise what we should what that how and what how we will be called as children of God kinsay nagtawag nato nga mga anak tas Gino who calls us to be a children of God kinsay nagtawag matag usa nato nga mahimutag mga anak sa Dios now here's the first thing it is the father does Ang amahan may nagtawag ka na kita mga anak sa Diyos. Why? Listen to this verse. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. It is God Himself. It is God the Father who proclaim, who declare na ikaw o ako iyang anak. Amen? Now, the second thing is that si Kristo mismo, the Son of God, ang nagtawag nato na kita iyang mga what? We are sons of God. Listen to this verse, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. He is not ashamed, talking about Christ, He is not ashamed to call them brethren. Dili niya ikaawaw na tawagong tag kisa Brethren. Amen? And the third thing is that it is the Holy Spirit itself. In book of Romans chapter 8 verse 16, the Spirit Himself bears witness within our spirit that what? That we are children of God. Now here's the thing. If we are truly children of God, it should show in our likeness to the Father. O tinuuray ta nga mga anak sa Diyos mga Isoon, makit ang kini ngadto sa atong adlaw-adlaw nga pagkinabuhi. How? In our love for our brethren. Nga makit ang kini sa atong paghigugma ngadto sa atong isig ka magtutuo. And we need to understand that not all are children of God. We are all created by God, but the Bible declares not all are children of God. Unsaon na to pagkahibaw nga anak tas ginoo. Remember John chapter 1 verse 12. Whoever believe and receive in his name, he give the right to become what? A children of God. Two things ang mahitabo dere. You need to receive Jesus Christ and believe what He did 2,000 years ago on the cross. And then the Bible declares, you'll be called as children of God. Amen? Now, let's go to the third part of verse 1. Therefore, the world does not know us. Why? Because it did not know Him. And that's the reason why do not be surprised or be offended if the world does not know us. Why? Because first and foremost, the Bible declares, He came to His own, but His own did not accept Him. Pagabot ni Cristo, gidawat ba sa mga katawan? No. In fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, the Bible declares, for those who want to live in a godly life in Christ Jesus will be what? Will be persecuted. Amen? So therefore, in your life as a true believer in Christ, if you are being persecuted, that is a normal thing to happen. Otherwise, if you are not persecuted, then you have to question your faith. 
2 Corinthians chapter 10, 13, verse 5, it says, Examine your faith. Why? Ang usaka kristuhanon, mga isoon, you should be one. Ang sagi ko na ginoon isos, book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light to shine before men that they may see your good deeds and they will praise your Father who is in heaven. Now, my question this morning is, is your light shining to the world? Or otherwise, the world will tell you we are just the same. Amen? It started with the word, behold. What does it mean in verse 2? Behold, now we are children of God. The, whole, the word behold means a command to focus on the subject. Now, what is the subject then? The subject is that indeed we are among the children of God. We are the children of God. How? Remember book of Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The Spirit Himself testifies, bears witness with our spirit. That what? We are children of God. Amen? Friends, if you and I are real children of God, you have an inward witness within your heart. You have an inward witness deep in your heart. And that is what book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 is all about. The Bible declares, you will be sealed by the Holy Spirit of God as mark of God's ownership into your life. Og makitan igsoon kanang butanga sa imong kinabuhi day by day as you continue to walk in this temporary life in our Christian walk of faith. Amen? Now, go to the second part of verse 2. That we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. Listen to the word, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Friends, mga exalt. The Bible speaks of God's great plan in our lives. How? Listen to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 29. This is what the Bible declares. For whom he foreknew, which is you and I, he also predestined to be what? To be conformed into the image of his son, that he might what? That he might be Firstborn among the brethren. Now, listen to this. God's ultimate goal in our lives is for us to have a Christ-like life. That we need to walk in a Christ-like life day by day. And Christians should long to be like Christ. Ona ingon imhat magandi nga I like your Christ but I don't see Christian living like Christ. So as we walk ni ning kinabuhi ang mga igsoon. Nga kinahanglan it's not only talking but it is what walking. Mauna ingon ni James, uh, J- book of James chapter 1 verse 22, it says, Be a doers of the word of God and not a hearers only, deceiving yourself. Nga sa believers in Christ, og igorata sa baba ang atong gila ng imong kaugalingon. Amen? Now, there are people who don't like to be like Jesus. We claim to be Christian. If you don't like to be like Jesus, even though you call yourself Christian, well, it will manifest in your walk of life. Matong nakaingon si Ginoong Isos, dili tanan ang nagtawag ka na ako, Ginoo, Ginoo. Kisa may mutawag kang Kristo, Ginoo, Ginoo. Well, Muslim will not call Jesus their God. Iglesia ni Kristo, they will not call Jesus their God. Jehovah's Witness will not call. It is only Christian. Amen. It is only those who profess to be Christian, which means not all Christians can enter the kingdom of God, but only he who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. 
Mao nang buti pasabot ni Ginoong Isos. And then, listen to the praise, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Friends, none of us will be perfect until we see Jesus and only then we shall see him as he is. Gahapon among gilubong si Tadod mga igsoong. And in the last part sa kinabuhi na Tadod, doon na siya mga struggles in life. And then sa last na mga panag-istorya together with Brad Weaving, amo yun so gipoint blank. Doon, kumusta ang imong relasyon sa ginoo? And who's the answer? Nya noy unsa may may tabo. Nay ba ko gasa ko pa ingon. I will be with him. Amen. Why? Because the spirit itself testifies with his spirit. You have an inward witness within you that indeed you are a child of God. Kay bisa pagunsao ni mo pagingon nga anak kas Ginoo. But in the other side of the coin, ang imong kinabuhi, totally opposite sa kabubuton sa gino, you also have an inward witness. Because Christianity is a personal relationship. Amen? Wa man koy magdipayeng glass ka mo kini klaro ni nga Christian, kini hanap ni hanap, wa ni klaro hanap. No. It is your business to God. Amen? That is personal. Listen to what Paul says. He's later to the church of Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. It says, For now we see in mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Now friends, in the ancient time, sa karang panahon ang ang kitawag nga samin or mirror, what we call mirror, dili ni siya yung ani. Pero metal, metal siya nga, gipalis siya nga metal. It's not mirror like this. Today, ugmutan mo ta sa, sa samin, wato ka dito sa eskina, kitang yun mo ang imong pagkaikaw. No? Doon ay mga bakakon nga mirror nga mo, mudako kay ka, which you don't like. No? Doon na po yung mga mirror nga klaro yun. Nag-unsa ka, ipakita yun ko sa mirror. Now, in the same way, one day we will see Jesus with perfect clarity when we see Him face to face. Amen? And that is what we are aiming for in this life. Take note. Heaven is precious to us for many reasons. To look about tang mga egsoon, nga nung ang gitawag na itong heaven is so precious. And we are dreaming that one day we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mauna ang ingon ni Pablo, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, the first thing, nga nung nindot kayo pamalandungon, ang gitawag na itong gingharian sa Diyos, we call it heaven, because we long to be with our loved ones who have passed away before us in whom we miss so dearly. Ang ato mga labuans, akong nanay, tatay, ang akong igsoon, one day, may igsoon, if we will be with the Lord, we will have a lovely reunion. Amen? Kita nato si nanay, silang pastor, si, all of them. All of them. And the second one is, we long to be with the great man of God who have passed away before us in a century's past. I'm excited na makita po na ako si Moses. I'm excited na makita na ako si Pablo. Ingon nila si Pablo putot. But I'm excited. No? I'm excited na makita na ako ang mga kaigsunan in the Old Testament. I'm excited for that. Are you excited? Amen? Praise God. And the third thing is that, in Book of Revelation says, I'm excited to walk in what we call street of gold. Unsa kano? It's, kanang mga butang mga isong. Lakaw ka kuno sa bulawan nga dalan. I'm so excited. Here's the thing. 
none of those things make heaven really heaven. None of those things. What makes heaven heaven is the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? That makes heaven heaven. The presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and this will be the greatest experience of our internal existence in life. Amen? That we will be with Him forever and ever. And let's go to verse 3. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Friends, this is one of the most purifying hopes within the church. Why? Because Jesus is coming at any moment. And we were going to be changed. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, it says, For the twinkling of an eye. And in verse 53, it says, this perishable body will be changed to what? To imperishable. And that is what we call the rapture of the church. At the end of the church age, we will be what? We will be raptured and be with the Lord for seven long years. And then after seven years, we will be back together with the Lord for the war of Armageddon. We will be with Him. And until that, we will reign with Jesus for a thousand years. Amen? And friends, that time, we will see him face to face. Therefore, because the Lord is coming soon, you and I, I want to use my time for his glory and keep myself pure. Amen? That is our goal as a Christian while we are still on this temporary life. Kay mo abot ang panahon mga isuon, dili na mo ingunta nga ugna na ta sigdaanan, nagligid na mo ingunta nga, ug tanganan, yung kukigayon sa ginoon, mga langit, yung kulor. Pikatan ka sa ginoon. Why? Nin mayo pang imo pang lawas wa pag wa gani ka nagpagamit sa Gino. And that's the reason why we need to bear in our mind. Now is the day for you and I to be used by God mightily for the expansion of his kingdom here on earth even in this local place in Talisay. Amen. That should be our goal mga igso atong ipagamit sa Ginoo and ultimately we need to put our hope in him alone we must never set our hope on other things not on our relationship sometimes ang atong relasyon ngadto sa atong pamilya ngadto sa maoy mahimong babag sa pag sunod sa kabubuton sa Ginoo sa buluhaton we have a lot of excuses in life not to miss your names, mga egzon. Apandagan sa mga egzon na nato dere. They have struggles in life, physically. But ilang gipagamit ang ilang kinabuhi sa ginoo. Amen? Ilang gipagamit. Why? Because they know the principle in life that this life is just temporary. Nisuwat si Pablo sa tagay piso. Unsa yung ni Pablo? Redeeming the time for the days are evil. Don't expect na kining kalibutan mo nindot pa ni sa imong panghunahuna. No! It's becoming worse and worse and worse. But there's only thing. But if you have Christ in your life, you have joy. Whatever happen, circumstances can affect, cannot affect joy. Because that is eternal. Amen? Bisag kung sa pa'y mahitabo ng kinabuhiya, doon na tayo kalinaw, kalipay sa pagpangalagad. Why? Because Jesus is in us. Amen? 
not rely on your success in life. Do not rely on your investment, not even in your health, not even in your position, not even on yourself. Our only hope is, the, in the Bible says, our only hope is in Him, in Christ alone. Amen. Now here's the second reason of holy living. God the Son died for us. That is verse 4 to verse 8. Now, go to verse 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is what? Lawlessness. Now, if we go back to 1 John chapter 1, John declared that if we say we have not seen, we make God a liar, and the truth is not in us. Now, in this verse, John defines sin. He says, sin is lawlessness. Now, there are many definitions of sin in the Bible. Now, say for instance, in Romans chapter 14, verse 23, it says, whatever is not in faith is what? Sin. Now, if you go to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9, it says, the thought of foolishness is sin. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, it says, All unrighteousness is sin. And so on, and so on, and so on. Meaning, sin is anything contrary to the character of God. Anything against the will of God is what we call sin. Now, let me give you an illustration, a story. A group of teenagers were enjoying, enjoying a party. And then someone suggested that they have to go to a certain restaurant for a good time. Obviously, not chips. Good time, so maginom sila. So this is not chips. Now, and Amanda, Amanda said to her date, I'd rather you to take me home because my parents don't approve of that place. And somebody says, are you afraid that your father will hurt you? And Amanda says, no, I'm not. I'm not afraid that my father will hurt me. I am afraid that I might hurt my father. Wako mahadlok nga, pasakitan ko sa akong amahan. Ang akong gikahadlokan, na makapakasa, ma, makapasakit ko sa akong amahan. Amen? Na og nakasabot na sa atong pagkakristuhan ng mga egzon. Si Amanda nakasabot. She understood the principle that the true child of God who experienced the real love of God has no desire to sin against that love. Ano man, iyang nasinati ang gugma sa iyang amahan o dili niya buot niya pasakitan ng iyang amahan. And that is what we call love. Amen? Take note on this. Man is not a sinner because he commits sins. He commits sins because he is a sinner. In real world, mga isoon, sa wapata makaila sa gino, we are all what we call spiritually dead. We are all separated from God. Muna nga ganahan kita muhimo sa mga sa, o niya ato pang ipanghambog. You recall sa kinabuhi na ito nga wapaka magkristuhan? Pagarpar kay ka, pasigarbuhon kay ka, anything you own, mayong ka, dipindi rimog na sa diskarte. But now, when you become a true believer in Christ, your mindset was being changed. In book of Colossians chapter 3, it says, you set your mind on things above, not on the earthly things. And as a child of God, now sabang atong pananaw sa kinabuhi, everything belongs to God. Amen? Doon ay mingon ka, nindot sa mong sakinan, brad. Praise the Lord. Gipiyal na sa ginoon. Kaninut sa mong balay, Brad. Praise God. Piniyalan rako nas ginoon. 
Ninduta nang imong cellphone brad. Depende ra nas diskarte. Asa may ato ato. Depende ra sa diskarte o salamat sa Ginoo. Amen. Go to first but verse 5. It says, "And you knew him that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him there is no sin." Listen to this. In him there is no sin. Now, there are two purposes for the coming of Christ into the world. First, verse 4 to verse 6. To take away our sins. Mo na pinakauna. Ikaduha, to destroy the works of the devil. That is in verse 7 to verse 8. Now let's go to the first one. To take away our sins. Now the word take away, every Sunday after our service, do not take it reflection or take away. Hmm. The word take away means to remove. Unsay nakuha ni mo dito sa giwale. Unsa imong na take away sa giwale. After the sermon, do not tie take away or reflection time. Now, Jesus paid the price for our guilt. He took away the penalty for our sins. And He's coming into the world has a purpose. Sa pagpakatao ni Cristo may son, dunay rason kung ano. First, Jesus came into the world as a man with a mission and commission to take away our sins. Ang mission ni Cristo to be crucified on the cross. And He was commissioned to take away our sins. Mona, sa tubangan sa mahan, dili na ikaw tanahon. Kag ikaw tanahon, sibaw tang tanan. Apan ang tanahon sa mahan, it is the seal of the Holy Spirit as mark of God's ownership into your life. Listen to John chapter 1, verse 29 talks about the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who is the Lamb of God? Who takes away the sins of the world. Kisa ko si Cristo? Who takes away the sins of the world. Amen? Does it mean that the whole world are being saved by God. No. Kisa tong anak sa Ginoo, John chapter 1 verse 12, whosoever believe and receive in his name, he give the right to be what? To be a children of God. Amen. And it says, listen to the praise, and in him there is no sin. Remember Christ was sinless. Did not, he did not possess a sinful nature. And he alone was able to pay for our sins due to his what? Spotless and sinless life. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. You might be surprised I use a lot of verses because I want you to study the scriptures. Amen? So what did you then study the scriptures? Who committed no sin? It talks about Jesus Christ. Nor was the seed found in his mouth. Now, Jesus removed all guilt from us, and our record in life is completely clean before God. Completely clean. Ganina gikanta ganina. Pagkanta ganina yung sa kanta. As for the east is from the west. So far, He removed our transgressions from us. My son, kami mga siman, I've been working a long time. Mutanaw ka sa east side, unya mulingi ka sa west side, you cannot miss you. You cannot miss you. And that is the love of God. Unfathomable, unmeasurable, unbelievable. Amen? And the Bible even declares in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 17, And their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. Hallelujah! Di ba ngayon palakpakan ang ginawa Praise God. Dili ka ngayon 
pasayloon apan gipasaylo ka sa Ginoo pagka maayo ug pagkabuotan sa atong Dios amen now let's go to verse 6 whoever abides in him does not sin whoever sins have neither seen him nor knew him now it is very important to understand what the Bible means when it says, does not sin. Importante ni mga isaon nga ato ning masabdan. Kay you and I, giingnan na nata ni Juan sa 1 John chapter 1 verse 8, nga huwag mo yung kunata, what I saw, baka kunta. O ang kamaturan, wa deri na to. So what does it mean when the Bible says, does not sin? It simply means, does not live a lifestyle of habitual sin. Habitual sin. Why? Kaya nag-warning naman si John. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amen? Isa may waysa adya, atas kamot. Now, Paul teaching in book of Romans chapter 6 is a good example of this principle. Ang um, ugbasahon nimo ang Romans chapter 6 makita nimo ang maong prinsipyo nga gisgutan dito. It shows that when a person come to Jesus, his sins are forgiven and God's grace is extended to him which means the old man is dead and the new man lives. Amen. And that is what we call by being born again or born from above, or what we call in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, anyone is in Christ, is a new creation, the old things has gone, and behold, all things becomes new. Amen. Kung ato ning basahon, mga isoon, makita na to, nga ang kausaban sa kinabuhi, dili nagikandiha ka nimo. We don't have a capacity to be born again. No. Monang nagingon sa ginoong Isos, come to me. And the word come is what? It is an invitation. O kisa tong mudul ka na ko. In John chapter 8, verse 36, If the Son will set you free, you will be free indeed. Si Kristo ra ang makahatag ka na tong kagawasan gikan sa sala. Amen? Now, let's go to verse 7. Ingundri, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Now, listen to the first part. Little children, let no one deceive you. Now, this tells us that John wrote against a deception intimidating the, Christ, the Christians during his life, during his time. Kay nga naman, kay 60 years after the death of Christ, dito daghan na kayo anti-Christ. Gnosticism. Kaya ngon sa theology, gitawag na siya Gnosticism. Na para nila, o gusto ni mo mga makaadto kas gingarian sa gino, doon na sila'y nahibawan nga mas labaw sa uban. And it is happening also now. Now, gusto ni mo mahilangit, kinangalan magpamimbro ka, musud ka sa ilang kural, and then you will be with God. Those teaching started even during the time of John. And it is happening until now. O mo ato po kagdabaw doon ay kingdom po dito. Nagitawag ni Kibuloy nga siya ang Jesus Christ. Those things started even the time of John. And it is happening until now. Amen? And John is not seeing that we are made righteous before God by our own act or our own practice of righteousness makes us righteous before the sight of God. Apan ang gitudlo ni Juan Dere nga mahimulan tag matarong sa atubangan sa gino through our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And that righteousness in Jesus will what? Will manifest into our life. 
nga makita sa atong adlaw-adlaw nga pagkinabuhi. And then, when we come to the end of this life, remember this, only God's righteousness will be acceptable to Him and not our own man-made righteousness. Let me give you an, a story as my personal testimony. Doon ako'y giwitnisan ng Australian pilot. Ingon dahil sa pilot, as I continue to witness, ingon dahil niya, you know, Mr. Mate, I know what is right and I know what is wrong. Why should I do wrong if I know what is right? But I don't believe in your God. You see, do na sila'y pagkamatarong. But the problem is, it is not the righteousness of God, it is man-made righteousness. Because the righteousness of God is Jesus Christ. Amen? Nga kinahanglan matao ka pag-usap. That's the reason why if someone will say, I am a Christian and live like the devil, he is just kidding himself. This is what we call self-deception. Because the simple principle is that people believe on what they see. Paminawang ginga ni Charles Haddon Spurgeon. This is what Charles Haddon Spurgeon says. The grace that does not change my life will not save my soul. I'll say it again. The grace that does not save my life will not change, will not save my soul. Nga sa ato pa mga isoon, o ang grasya sa gino, tinuuray na animo. It will change your life. It will change your life and my life. Amen? Listen to verse 8. Let's go to verse 8. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God will manifest it and he might destroy the work of the devil. Now, let's go to the first phrase. He who sins is of the devil. Now, people who are steady in habitual sins are not the children of God. But the Bible declares they are of the devil. They are of the devil. That is not my word. It is the word of God. Now, here's the logic. Go to the logic. The logic is very clear. If a man knows God, he will obey God. Simple. If he belongs to the devil, he will obey the devil. And that is the simple logic. Na, o nahibaw ka sa gino, of course, you will obey God. Amen? But, if he belongs to the devil, he will obey the devil. Friends, if you are lover of sin, listen to this. If you are lover of sin, of course, you shall go where sinners go. Remember the sayings that says, Tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. Amen? The logic is simple. Man who knows God, he will obey God. And the truth of the matter, if you have a true faith, in the precious blood of Jesus, you will hate sin. Amen? Anakas ginoo, malipay pa ba pagpakasa? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because the inner witness, mga egzon, doon na na mo warning sa imong kasing-kasing. Apan, even until now, why na, why na itaybo sa imong kasing-kasing within your heart, Muhimo kag mga butang nga wakay mo at is ginoo, no conviction at all, then examine your faith. Need to examine your faith. Paul says, if you are in the right faith. Amen? Now, let's go to the second part of verse 8. For the devil has seen from the beginning. Now, Satan committed 
the first sin. And what he did, he introduced sin into the universe. Si Satanas may una nga nakasa. O iyang gi-promote ang sa sa tibuok kalibutan. And take note on this, when we partake or part in sin, we share in what we call satanic activity. Mo partake gani ka sa mga sa, sa mga butang, nga wak, ay mutis gino, then you share the satanic activity in this life. Mga egzon, atong hinunduman, we need to understand that it is God who created Lucifer. Listen to this. It is God who created Lucifer, the day star. He was called a light bearer. Lucifer is a light bearer, a day star. But Lucifer become a devil when he sinned against God. Sa dihang nakasa si Lucifer, iyang gidis, obey ang kabubuton sa gino, nahimu siyang itawag na itong devil or demonyo. But before he fit, he had the authority over all angels in the universe. And if you want to find out, read book of Isaiah chapter 14. Makita ni mo dito. O unsay hinungdan nga nung si Lucifer gitawag o Demonyo. Sa dihang ning disobey siya sa ginoon. And here's the mission statement of devil in your life and in my life. Paminawan ninyo ang mission statement. If the church, if we have mission statement in this church, the devil also has. Do na po siya. Listen to this. In John chapter 10 verse 10. The devil mission statement is to kill, steal, and destroy. Ang gusto sa yawa, kawaton ang imong pagtuo. Ang gusto sa yawa, on sa man. Patyon ang imong pagtuo. Ang gusto sa yawa, he will destroy your life. And that is the mission statement of the devil. And that is the sum of the devil's modus operandi in this he will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy your faith. Amen? And he lies to people. Sige lang siya pamakaka to sa tao and get them to believe that they can go independent from God. You can operate your life without God. And that is what we call ang pamaagi sa yawa. However, the Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter 15, verse 5, Apart from me, you can do nothing. Meaning, kining kinabuhiya, in order for us to operate this life, we need Jesus and we need His Word. Day by day. Remember book of Psalm 119, verse 105? Ang ibong pulong kahayag o glamdag sa akong tilan. Amen? Without the Word of God, we cannot operate this life sa insakto na pamaagi. Maunang magka-because-because ang kinaboy sa tao, because of what? Wa na ta magbasa, wa na times to read the Word of God, wa na time to meditate the Word of God. The devil brings confusion and darkness into the thinking of mankind. And that is why a lot of people of today, ilang gidawat ang bakak sa yawa, they involved in drugs, they involved in what we call free sex, they involved in homosexuality, they involved in online gaming, everything which is very rampant of today. No time for God. And that is the lies of the devil. Nagigamit sa yawa. Aron ng atong time, wala nas ginoo. Friends, I, I remind you always, you can be a true believer in Christ. Yes, praise the Lord for that. Apan ang gusto sa yawa nga mahimu kang believers, kay di naman kanya makuha, himuong kanya, inutil nga Kristuhanon. That 
is the mindset of the devil. Because the Bible is clear. Once you are Christian, genuinely saved, the Bible declares, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one can snatch them away out from my hand. Indeed, no one can snatch them away. Wala na kayo makakuha pa na ito gikan sa kamot sa Diyos. But the thing is, ang himoon sa yawa, himoon matagos na ka ng mga inutil nga Kristohanon. And my question this morning, do you want to be called as inutil nga Christian? Is somebody here wanting to be called as inutil nga Kristohanon? I suppose no. Amen? Magpagamit tas ginoo mag -ison. Amen? Kaysa itong magpagamit sa ginoo tas kamot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ayaw gimo ay zone nga mahimot ang inutil ka Kristohanon. Now. His goal is always the same. Ang goal sa yawa wa ni siya mausab. To get people ignore God and to put Christianity out of the reader screen of your life. Okay siya tawgon ka Christian. Pero wa kay na himong kaayuhan para sa bulaton sa Ginoo. It's okay for devil. It's okay for them. A panic zone. Nining mga wahi nga maadlaw pagpagamit sa Ginoo. Amen. Kay ang yawa bakakon. Ngano man, it is just natural for them to to lie. Normal na nila nga mamakak. Why? Because it is a part of their family heritage. Unsa man di ay, ang ilang amahan, the Bible declares in John chapter 8, verse 44, Satan is the father of all lies. Amahan sa tanang baka. Therefore, dili sa dili lisod, sa dili kristuhanon ang pagpamakak. Why? Because it is their nature. Lisod sa kristuhanon mamakak, nga naman kay anak mang kasgino. Amen? Dili, dili lisod sa dili kristuhanon ang pagpamakak da nganuman kay sila anak sa ama ang ilang amahan ang amahan sa tanang bakakon so we need to be very careful now let's go to the third part of verse 8 it says for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil now Ganina, I, I mentioned that John gives us two reasons why Jesus came. First, to take away our sins. Now, here's the second one. To destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the last phrase of verse, the third part, to destroy the works of the devil. Mga Jesus came to free us from the works of Satan. The devil is a powerful enemy. Ayaw king na nga, ah, kining yawa. Dali rin ni, no. Ayaw mong tuong ang yawa mo na nakita ninyo sa, sa sinihan or ka nang sa duwa na online gaming na doon ay sungay, doon ay ikog. That's not. Dili na mo ang yawa. Ang yawa, tanaw ninyo, Nga ka sa sinihan, doon ay tango. No, that's not. Ang yawa na kinamdog ko kang pastor, doon ra kay ninyo. Four inches from your ear. Naara diri ang yawa, nagsigig hong hong nimo, nga ayaw sugta ang gino. Ayaw tos gino. Mauna ang yawa. At Jesus came to destroy the work of Satan. How? Then pamutana na ko mga ison. Do you want to escape from the cruelty of the devil? That is my question. Do you want to escape from the cruelty of the devil into your life? If your answer is yes, do na solution ang Biblia. In Book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Unsa gingon ni Ginoo Isos? Come to me, all of you who are tired and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. But here's the thing. The word come is an invitation. Whether you will come to Jesus or not to come to Jesus. 
but I will encourage you to come. Amen? Because the Bible declares, if the Son will set you free, you will be, be, you will be free indeed. O gunsa may nagpaulipo ni mo ning mga orasa, whatever it is, you will be delivered. You will come to Jesus. Amen. Now, let's go to the third part. Verse 9 to verse 10. The reasons for holy living. The third one is that because God the Spirit lives in us. Kay ang ginoo ang Espiritu anaa nimo og nako. Verse 9, it says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, John here is simply emphasizing what does it mean to be born again. It means that a change came into our lives. How? At the point of salvation. At the point of salvation, we get a spiritual nature or, or what we call a divine nature or what we call being born from above and that is what we call by being born again. Now, by being born again, this is one of the most controversial issue in the Bible. Somebody says, well, you have a new, new religion. In fact, mga kaisunan, even a prominent Pharisee in the name of Nicodemus, wa pud siya makasabot. Remember, a Pharisee, they are expert of religious law. And yet, wa siya makasabot of what born again is all about. Even this time, daghan paghihapon ang wa makasabot. O unsa ning born again. O sa gingo ni, ni, ni ginong Isus ka Nicodemus, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. Now, ning tubag si Nicodemus, usaw man ako, matiguwang naman ko. Usaw man ako, pagpakatao, pag-usap. Nga naniguwang naman ko. So, unsa man mindset sa tao, literal things. Ingo ni Ginoong Isus, di ba maestro man ka? Nga nung wa man ka makasabot sa mga espirituhan ng butang. My zone, ang tao nga patay sa espiritu, dili siya makasabot sa mga espirituhan ng butang. Why? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, if you will read that passage of scriptures, you will find out that a person who is spiritually dead cannot understand sa mga butang na espirituhan. Dili siya makasabot. Mo nag ipakapinampa si Nicodemus sa pagingon ng Ginoong Hesus in John chapter 3 verse 7, you must not be surprised at my sayings, you must be born again. And the word must is a command. There's no other option is is a command that you and I needs to be born from above or needs to be Amen. In order for you and I to enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Once God gives us eternal life, friends, it is unalterable, it is final. Mona dili na tinood nga ang imong kalawasan mawa. That is not true. Your salvation is final. O ikaw tinuray nga kristuhanon, naglakaw diha sa iyang pulong, ang imong kalawasan is unalterable. And it says, our old nature, kining atong lawas, ang himuon sa lawas o sa kabutang, ang paghimog sa. Mao rin na hibawan ini. Ang imong lawas o ang akong lawas, ang himuon ini ang paghimog sa. But the moment na mahimu na kag-born again, gitawag isang new nature, ang new nature ni mo, dili ito mo himog sa. Mauna nga, ang lawas o ang espirito nagkontra ni Kanunay. Mayingon ni Pablo nga, ang gusto sa lawas kontra sa espirito, ang gusto sa espirito kontra sa lawas o kining duha nagsumpake. They cannot go together. Why? Because they are opposite. Mauna, dunay advice si Pablo sa matag-usaka Kristuhanon. 
In book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, it says, Be controlled by the Spirit of God. Nga sa ato pa, ayaw kitugot nga kining maong lawas, kining atong lawas, o maoy mo, mo control, kining atong lawas, hambugiro, kining atong lawas, o sa painahibawan ninyo sa atong lawas. Tanan ng mga butang, nga dili kahimaya sa ginoo mao himuon sa atong lawas and the simple solution nga gihatag ni Pablo ingon niya be controlled by the spirit of God listen to book of Romans chapter 7 verse 18 ingon ni Pablo for i know that in me kining akong lawas in my flesh nothing good dwells ug ato ning bisayao ning ani wa yug koy ayo nga pagka tao now, let's go on. For the will is present with me. Na ako'y gustong imon. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. O sa Tagalog pa nga kanta, gusto kong bumait, gunit, hindi ko magawa. That is biblical. Di ka kakahimo, anak. Nga naman, ang gusto sa lawas, opposite sa espiritu. Now, verse 19. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil, I will not to do that I practice. Ingo ni Pablo, ang imong problema o problema ni Pablo o ang akong problema is the same. Ingo ni Pablo, naglibog ko din kinabuhiya. Ang abota nga gusto na ko himon, di ko kahimo. Ang dili na ko gusto himon, mawag akong nahimo. Pero kimo ni basaw na ito sa tumoy, ingo ni Pablo, apan salamat sa Diyos, pinagi kang Kristo. Mahimo na ko ang tanan. It is only through Christ. Listen to what Paul says in book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Ingo ni Pablo, For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Gusto sa salawas, kontra sa spirito, ang gusto sa spirito, kontra sa salawas, Mao na ingon Pablo, mao na di mo kahimo. And verse 16 niya, be controlled by the spirit. Amen. So kinahanglan kining lawasa makontrol sa espiritu. The same preaching nga giwali ni Pablo ngadto sa mga taga episo. The same thing. Nga no man mga igsoon because Paul warned Christian before, nga kinahanglan kining atong pagkatao must be controlled by the Spirit of God. Since you are indwelled by the Spirit of God, you need to be filled or be controlled by the Spirit of God. Amen? Listen to this verse. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. Seeing as a believers to put off concerning your what? Your former conduct. Hubuan ako nun ninyo. Your old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And that we are to put on a new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, if you recall a story, siguro na kayo namudumoy niya, a little boy, nganing dagan nga ito siyang tatay. Nga pagkabot isang tatay, ingon niya, ingon siyang tatay, dung, ni duta sa imong sininoy, bago man, nagpasigar mo ang bata. Ingon na sa bata, gipalitan kong nanay, ay, nindot kayo. Bisag COVID, na ay kwartas nanay. Nakapalit siya si Nina. Nindot kaya nga si Nina. And praise the Lord. Pag ako samahan, igsoon, iyang gihawkan ang iyang anak. Ingon na sa man, bahuan ni mo dungoy. As kang bahuan ni mo. Inya, wa magod na ako gihubo tayo ang akong daan nga si Nina. Baho ang iyang lawas. Why? Naaragihapo ng iyang daan nga sinina. The same thing in our spiritual aspect of life. Mahimong baho ang atong pagkakristuhanon if we claim to be a Christian and yet the old self still controlled by the flesh. Pinahanglan mga isong, ingon ni Pablo, be controlled by the Spirit of God. Amen? Now, makabandlay mo sa verse 9, ang repetitive word. Gibalik-balik dito. Ingon dito, do not sin. He cannot sin. Does not sin. And cannot sin. 
Ano man eh, ibalik-balik man na. It simply means, John tells us that the moment we come born again, born into the family of God, there is a real change in our life in relationship to sin. Dunay mahimong kausaban ang atong kinabuhi. Ang Biblia, the Bible does not teach us that Christian can reach the state of sinless perfection in life. Wa mo ingon nga pa ini ka Christian ni mo, perfect na ka. No, there's no such thing as perfect on earth. But Christians are not sinless, the sinless. Ako na mga We are not sinless, but we sin less. Ano man? Because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit into your life. Pero dili pa kaburnagin, magpadayon kaghimog. Mga butang nga wa kahimot isa imong kinabuhi. Amen? Now, let's go to verse 10. And we will end up, there is a verse 10. Verse 10, it says, In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Now, let's go to the first part. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil. Here we will find out that there are two classes of people in the world. Duharaka klase. The children of God and the children of the devil. And there is a very clear distinction between them. The children of God will not continue sinning. That is what the Bible say in verse 9. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Meaning, habitual sin. Now, ganak ka sa gino, dili ka makapadayon sa mga pagbuhat sa maong butang. However, the children of the devil will what? Will continue on sinning. So, gikontrast sa Biblia. Ang anak sa gino, dili mo padayon sa pagpakasa. Ang anak sa yawa, mo padayon siya sa pagpakasa. Nga man. Look at verse 8. There is atong gibasa. No one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Meaning, ang mga anak sa yawa, although they claim to be Christian, but in reality, magpadayon sila pagbuhat sa mga sa, nga wa kay muti sa ginoo. Why? Here's the reason. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. Their names are not written in the book of life. Magpadayon sila sa mga butang na wa kay muti sa ginoo. And here's one thing. Unbelievers has no capacity to do righteousness of God. Why? Because they does not possess a divine nature of God or what we call they are not born again. Amen? Pwede sila muhimo og mga maayong butang. Nga gitawag na itong kalibutanong maayong butang. Kato, parehat sa akong testimony kanina. Kato nga pilot, ingon na nahibaw ko kung sa'y mayo. Nahibaw ko kung sa'y dautan. Nga nung muhimo kong dautan, o nahibaw ko kung sa'y mayo. Pero wa kumuto sa mong gino. Meaning, pwede sila muhimo maayong butang, but in reality, they don't believe in God. Amen? Now, Let's go to the third part of verse 10. And we will end up here. It says, Nor he who does not love his brother. Nor is he who does not love his brother. Meaning, the absence of the love for fellow Christian is an indication of the absence of fellowship with the Lord. My son, usaw man nato pagkakitaan sa usa katao nga tinuray siya nga magtutuo sa Ginoo. Paminawa ang gingo ni Pedro. In John chapter 13, verse 34, we will end up here. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. Listen to verse 35. By this, you will know that you are my disciple. Why? If you love one another. This means... 
If you are true believers in Christ, you need to love your fellow Christians, those who love you and those who do not love you. Dili lamang nga, kinisya kay may manisya na ako, kay ayaw na ako, di takalabon. That is not the command of God. You will love those who love you and those who do not love you. Amen? If someone will say, I am a Christian within the church, and then you stab your brother or sister at the back, imong libakon, imong dunggabon sa likod, friends, you do not love your brother or sister. Here's the last verse. I will end here. First John chapter 2, verse 9. It says, He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness, meaning out of fellowship with God until now. In conclusion, only God can give us true righteousness and love. And that's the reason why we need to be born from above or we need to be born again. Amen? Praise the Lord. Happy Lord's Day. Salamat sa ginoo. Dalaygon ang ginoo sa iyang pagkamayo. And we will pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God, for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, nga imong ipakita ka namo ginoo. The children of God will not continue to sin. And the children of the devil will continue to do sins. Father, help us, O oh God. Help us through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can finish this run, the journey of this temporal life in the name of Jesus. Just thank you for your goodness and mercy. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray, our Lord and Savior. And everybody will say, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. So after the last song, we will continue our reflections, the takeaway. We will group by, by three. Tulutulo lang ta sa atong reflection times. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's all rise up in our seats and let's just sing His Mercy is More.
What riches of kindness he lavished on us His blood was the payment His life was the cost We soon need the death we can never afford Our sins they are takeaways for today's sermon and I request all the praise and worship team to have a meeting right after the service. Thank you. <laughs> 